Right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here on this gorgeous day uh, for yet another celebration of progress in our city. I think most of you know me by now. Uh, my name is Nick Chiaquinto, Chief of Staff for Mayor Rodriguez and former Chief of Staff to Mayor Bill Carpenter. Uh, before we get started, I'd just like to take a quick moment to acknowledge all of the elected officials here with us today. I saw Ward 6 Councilor Jack Lally. Uh, Southeastern Regional School Committee, Mark Lindy. <laughs> Ward 3 Councilor, Dennis Ioneri. <laughs> State Senator, Mike Brady. <laughs> Councilor at Large, Robert Sullivan. <laughs> Ward 4 Councilor, Suna Castro. <laughs> and Ward 5 Councilor, Ann Beauregard. So having now worked as Chief of Staff for two mayors while this project has undergone construction, uh, it seemed fitting that, that I should be here today to MC today's event, but not only to highlight more success for Brockton, but to speak for my friend Bill Carpenter, who felt very strongly about this development. Um, I'll tell you that this particular project was very important to him, uh, and I know he's probably looking down at all of us today, delighted to see another ribbon being cut, but wondering who the hell gave me a microphone. <laughs> 75 Commercial Street, as we know, used to be the uh, DTA, the Brockton DTA office, which sat vacant for many years. So we're very fortunate to get this property back online and in the hands of a developer who believes, as we do, that there's major potential here for transit-oriented housing. I will tell you that this administration has fully embraced the strategies that have worked so successfully for us over the last few years and we remain committed to keeping that positive momentum flowing. We continue to believe that gateway cities like Brockton can accommodate a significant number of housing units and new jobs on the vacant, underutilized land that surrounds our commuter rail stations. And this couldn't be more true uh, for a location just like this here in Brockton. With that, uh, please join me in welcoming our first speaker who is kind enough to let me MC today, Mayor of the City of Brockton, Moses Rodriguez. Thank you, Nick. Uh, as you can tell, I, uh, he actually took my speech as well. So I'm just gonna say hello to everybody and uh, I wanna thank the Lieutenant Governor for being here, Senator, members of the City Council, uh, colleagues in government, and uh, you guests who are here today to help us celebrate another victory for our city. As you know, um, in the past, uh, our city had uh, supposedly a reputation of, of being not too friendly to development which is not necessarily true because there's none of us that sit here today that's ever been against development. But we also wanted the right development for our community. Uh, there's absolutely nothing worse than having development that does not gel with what the city wants to do. But fortunately for us, this project is one of them. Uh, this project is one of many that we're looking at to make sure that we bring our city center back up I was uh, just promised a few minutes ago by the Lieutenant Governor that she's gonna go down and look for some funds to help us uh, further this dream. As I'll put you on the spot. Bill used to do that, I might as well continue this, right? She actually told me that there's a bag of money in that car that I'm gonna go after a few minutes from now, you know, with my name on it. And uh, since we're not in Fall River, ah! Too soon? Okay. But um, I just wanted to make sure that um, you, <laughs> listen, I just came from a, a, a mayor's conference in uh, Marlboro. Trust you me how many of those jokes were said. So, yeah, pr no, publicly. <laughs> so, so I'm glad that you are all here. I, I see some developers in the back, you know, and I, and I, I, wanna, th I wanna thank you for trusting in what we are trying to do here in this city. And I also am gonna pledge uh, my next few months in office as mayor in this city, but further, uh, hopefully as a city councilor in this community to continue to support development in our city 
especially in our downtown, because I'm a strong believer that as the downtown goes, so does Brockton. So it is important for us to continue to believe in this city, to continue to believe in each other in our city, uh, to continue to believe in the state and the friends that we have in state government to continue to help us. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking because I, I don't wanna get into any more trouble, but I just wanna thank you all for being here, the folks from City Hall who are here, uh, friends and families who are here as well, and uh, my colleagues in government, thank you for continuing to believe in us and supporting our city. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're joined here today by someone most of us uh, have come to know quite well over the last few years. I think when the Lieutenant Governor is in town, it's usually always for very good news, and today is no different. We're very grateful to be supported by the Baker Polito administration who continues to dedicate so much of their time and resources to Brockton's future. And uh, please welcome Brockton's friend and ally, uh, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. So good afternoon. Uh, it's an honor to be here once again in the city of Champions, a city that I absolutely love and to be able to have the opportunity to highlight and spotlight your continued success. As a uh, former mayor would say, uh, one more ribbon cutting for Brockton, one more construction project uh, done and another one soon to follow. So we're really happy to see your continued success. I just wanna thank Mayor Rodriguez for your uh, continued work not only on the council, but now as the mayor in the, the face of the city, uh, working through this transition uh, as the uh, leadership team continues to evolve here. And just wanna thank you for, for helping and continue to work on this momentum and signaling not only to the people of this community, but to the broader community that uh, Brockton is, is open for business, it's a place that they encourage more business investment, and it's a place where you should consider doing more uh, business so to continue the, the good progress that you're making. I want to thank uh, the Senator uh, for your presence here today. Uh, your counterpart in the House, Claire Cronin, is in session. Otherwise, she would also be here. And it's an opportunity for me to highlight how we collaborate here in the Commonwealth, both the state uh, executive branch, legislative branch, and uh, municipal officials working together to build strong communities. And when we build strong communities, we build strong regions, and we build a stronger Commonwealth. Uh, this morning, you had the opportunity, uh, Mayor, to, to visit with my counterpart at the, the mayor and manager's meeting out in Marlboro. And it's a real pleasure that I get to see you this afternoon. So it's a twofer for you, right? <laughs> but I have the bag of cash. I don't know what he travels with. Uh, so I just want to say a few things why this is important and why I'm here today. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a great economy in Massachusetts uh, all across the state. Uh, we think about that a lot. In fact, uh, the work that I've done in the communities of the Commonwealth, having visited all 351, we're now taking up uh, to another level, uh, thinking about our, our economic development plan for the next uh, few years ahead, working with the legislature on that. Uh, this economic development plan, which is required by the legislature, will actually serve as the blueprint for our administration, for the legislature, and for the communities to think about how we continue to do the things that are needed to uh, keep our economy moving in the right direction. What uh, we're thinking about is taking the economic blueprint and thinking about it regionally. And when you think about the regions of our Commonwealth, you think about the gateway cities, larger and small cities, as the capital of each region. And when you think about the capital of each region, as the mayor said, you know, so goes the downtown, so goes the city, so goes the region if a city like Brockton continues to thrive and offer opportunities for people to live, to work, and to have a good quality of life that spreads throughout the region. So our economic development vision is a regional one, and you'll see, see us talk about that and, and, and provide the, the roadmap, if you will, in the, in the upcoming months. But the key features uh, that we feel are really critical to the future success of this economy are twofold. One is housing. Uh, we clearly do not have enough housing in this Commonwealth. 
there was once a time in the 80s and 90s where we were building about 30 to 40,000 new units of housing a year. And now we're building about eight to 10,000 units a year. Clearly not enough to meet the demand in a state where population is growing. More people want to live here, more people find opportunity here, but we need to grow more housing stock, new units of housing in order to keep up with the demand and actually make it affordable and accessible for more people. Uh, with not enough supply, costs are going up and that's a barrier to continued growth in this Commonwealth. So more housing, more housing like the one we're highlighting today, the housing of choice in a community. You choose the kind of housing that you need and want in your community to meet everyone's needs. Older citizens who want to stay in the community and might not need their single family house anymore. Younger professionals who want to live in a community where they can afford a beautiful new apartment like this and get on the commuter rail and get to Boston in 35 minutes. How exciting is that? Working families that can afford to live in Brockton and have a good quality of life because they can access good education and safe and healthy neighborhoods. So you've, you've got a, a, an idea here, a vision here that can use housing as a tool to stabilize your population here and accommodate for the growth that you will experience as a city in this region. So housing is a key part of it. The other piece is workforce, uh, making sure that our education system is graduating students with the skills that employers need throughout the regions of the Commonwealth. And you'll see in our economic development plan, us looking in each region at the industry strengths and the sub-industries that are emerging and growing within each region and how we align our education assets to the workforce needs and to employers so that you not only can accommodate people who want to get on the rail and go to Boston, but that you are growing jobs locally within the region that you can clearly commute to in a short amount of time and be able to live, work, and play right around where uh, you call home. So that's really uh, the crux of the message I wanted to deliver uh, to you today and to thank you because you're doing your part as a municipality and your leadership is really important as you plan out the future uh, economy here in the city and the, the future of your downtown and main streets and the neighborhoods of the city. And that housing is a really critical piece for the future of your success as well. Because you put more market rate housing in downtown Brain, uh, Brockton, you have more people that live here all the time, not just during the work week. You get more people uh, downtown all the time, they're gonna want more Provis, more beer gardens, right? That was one thing that Bill loved. They'll want more restaurants and shops and culture and entertainment and things to do. So that becomes the, the ripple effect of this kind of living that can be available to more people in the downtown. So this doesn't just happen. It takes leadership. It takes a city council that's you know, focused on the permits and the approvals that are needed to work with not only the state that has an interest in some of these properties, but also the private sector. This is all not driven by government dollars. You need the private sector. You need private investment and developers who are willing to invest in projects like this and the one next door and the ones up the street. I believe the last time I was here for the housing announcements, it was at 121 Main Street uh, with uh, Mayor Carpenter at that time. And now you're seeing this, uh, this momentum continue. And uh, that private investment though, uh, today we certainly highlight Darren's investments. Darren DeCoast, thank you and your whole team so much. Uh, uh, taking a building that was uh, not being used and delivering the, the tax dollars to the city that it could, uh, that was formerly used as the DTA office, the Department of Transitional Assistance, is that, which is now up on Main Street, and freed up this building for uh, 24 market rate beautiful apartments that I can't wait to see, is terrific news. These are market rate, these are beautiful new accommodations, and uh, the access to bus and to rail are obviously uh, right nearby. Uh, I want to thank Eastern Bank, uh, Bob Rivers and his team for uh, seeing the, 
the, the, the worthy return on an investment like this. And I know that they've been a really great partner to Brockton and will continue to, to be, be so in the future. I also want to uh, say um, I got a peek at the garage uh, just a few years ago. I remember being in the room with the governor and then Secretary Ash about the, the parking garage that many of you advocated for with over 400 uh, spaces coming online. Uh, probably around the holidays. Uh, that'll be a, a terrific, uh, another amenity uh, for all of the growth you're experiencing here um, in the downtown area. Uh, so I think I just wanted to uh, close with uh, keep it up. Uh, you know, when the governor and I uh, see things that are working, we just want to be available to say, keep on doing uh, what, what's working. I want to give uh, George uh, a shout out to here in, in the back of the room, George Durante, who is your TDI fellow. Uh, he stands in the back of the room, but I know he's right up front in terms of his availability to all of you. We've learned uh, a lot from our TDI fellows. They're the, the resident experts on the ground for us, uh, the, the eyes and ears. and. Uh, you've learned a lot uh, working within the municipalities about what's working and how we can do more and we certainly want to see more TDIs in the next economic development plan and maybe even regional uh, transit development uh, fellows that can help us think about a region in the future growth and success of the regions of the Commonwealth. So uh, this is a proud day for our Commonwealth as we come here for another ribbon cutting. I'll never get tired of uh, doing these ribbon cuttings uh, with you here in Brockton. Uh, keep it up. Really happy to be with you here today and seeing so many people here to mark this uh, moment. So congratulations, Mr. Mayor, to the entire team uh, here in Brockton. It's really a pleasure to be with you today. I know our uh, state representatives couldn't be here today. I know they're in session in the House. So uh, on behalf of uh, the state legislative delegation, I'd like to introduce State Senator Michael Brady. Thank you, Nick. And, and first of all, I want to like the, um, thank the Baker Polito administration. I know you've spent probably more time than half the people that live in Brockton that work outside here. You've been here so many times. But it's important that our delegation is here representing the city of Brockton. We have to continue to invest in our gateway cities. And, and this is the hub of the South Shore. And, and uh, as, as Nick mentioned, our representatives, um, Claire Cronin, Michelle Dubois, and Jerry Cassie, they're doing business and legislation in the House today. Tomorrow, the Senate will take up the legislation. Everything starts in the House and goes to the Senate. So we have a great team working together from the governor's administration to our state delegation and to our local city councils and mayor. Nobody does it alone, and we have a great team. And that's why Massachusetts leads the nation in a lot of great initiatives. And education is a part of that. And we passed some increased funding for Chapter 70, money highest ever in the Commonwealth going to our gateway cities but it's still not enough. We have some other legislation that we're working on to even increase more funding for education. But these educators need a place to live. This is the first great initiative for people starting out with young couples and young families to have a place where they can afford to live, and it's a beautiful place. Right across from the Rocky Marciano Post Office, right next to, as the governor mentioned, the lieutenant governor mentioned, right next to our commuter rail in our bat bus facility. Everything's within a walking distance to this facility. And again, it's, it's market rate, so it's affordable for families starting out. And I'll tell you, I'm tempted to sign my house and try to move in one of these places. It's probably not av availability, but it's a beautiful luxury apartment. And I'll tell you, what a great job to the investors and the developers. And as I mentioned, it's a team effort by everybody. I'm honored to be our senator, and we've got to continue to move Brockton into the future to be innovative and come up with these great initiatives and have investments continue to be forward for our gateway cities. And we still have other work to do. We have a Ganley building on Main Street that we've been working on for quite some time. Hopefully we can get that down and create some new construction for that. And there's so many other projects on the table, so we've got to continue the work that's been started under the and a, um, a former mayor, Bill Carpenter, and continue with our current mayor, Moise Rodriguez, and our next mayor after this November election, which is very important. No matter who you support, and this is an important election for the city of Brockton, make sure you pass it and get everybody to vote. And thank you on behalf of the state delegation for all the partners being here today. Up next, I'd like to introduce the developer of this project, 
uh, Darren DeCoste of Stone Ridge Mutual Properties. Darren has been super easy to work with. I know we've had a number of conversations on the telephone quite often, and uh, uh, I'd like to introduce him and, and welcome him to the city of Brockton. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And bear with me, at completely out of my realm of uh, comfort zone, so this will be short and sweet. Welcome to Commercial Station. Oh, before I forget, thank you for all this uh, councilors, workers from the City Hall, friends, family, and everybody else, stakeholders in the city. We really appreciate you coming to celebrate with us. Uh, it's been a long two-year process to get to this point. Commercial Station, it's a 24-unit market-rate apartment building that used to be the transitional assistance building. Um, we had a vision of what it could be like, and it's come to fruition. It's been a long, hard road, but um, we've had learned a lot, and we've learned that we want to be in Brockton. We've also, this is phase one on this block, right? So there's three properties, five properties on this block that runs to School Street to Center, and we own three out of the five. So this is phase one. This is the completion of phase one. Phase two will be next door with the artist rendering right there. We propose, with the city's help and their enthusiasm, they're behind it, 44 market rate units above a commercial space, maybe 3,500 to 4,500 square feet for resident, uh, co commercial, retail, cafe, whoever wants to show up, we'll willing to rent it to them. That's phase two. Phase three, we also own 140 School Street at the opposite end of the building. We propose 40 units there as well. Hopefully at some point we'll get to what's 108 units of market rate apartments on this block. So, the city's been a great partner with us. Um, the definition of transit-oriented development from our position, we're at the nexus of transportation with the commuter rail, with the bus, the bus station. You can get to South Station in 35 minutes or any point in uh, Brockton with the short bus ride or the surrounding communities. So for us, we see it a great opportunity to build an urban neighborhood that doesn't exist now, right? The work, live, play that we talk about. Work, live, play, and commute because they can commute here as well as commute to Boston. That's what we think. Uh, so thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, and we appreciate your continued support. And I think that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Darren. Another close friend and partner to Brockton has been Eastern Bank. Eastern Bank and President Bob Rivers have been extremely committed to Brockton's growth and progress. And by, fin by financing projects like this, it allows us to rebuild. Uh, please welcome Executive Vice President of Eastern Bank, Matthew Osborne. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew Osborne with Eastern Bank. It is, it's just great to be here today. I really want to congratulate uh, Darren, Greg, and Steve on the accomplishment here at 75 Commercial Street in Brockton. I'd also like to introduce Sean Boucher. Sean works with me over at Eastern Bank, and he did a lot of the heavy lifting at the bank to make sure that, that what we needed to do to help them get done did get done. Uh, and uh, it's real exciting for us to have worked with you on this and see this come together. A little over a year ago, Sean and I met with Ga Greg and Darren at this property. It was a cold day. They walked us through an empty building. Uh, and as they did, they talked to us about what their plans were to converting it into 24 high-quality apartments. Having worked myself in Brockton for the past several years, I've been very fortunate to see firsthand the momentum that's going on in this city. And listening to Greg and Darren that day, it was clear to me that they were part of that momentum. They spoke with confidence, they spoke with enthusiasm, and a lot of excitement about what they were going to do, not only with this building, but with this block. And when Sean and I left them that day, we knew they were going to be successful and we knew we wanted to be a part of it. This completed project, it's going to, which is going to provide excellent quality housing for people in this city, reflects the combined efforts of the city of Brockton, private development, and private financing. It's a credit to everyone involved in the process and really reflects the collect what, uh, what we can accomplish when we bring all of our collective talents together for a greater good. You know, and that word good, that word good means a lot to us at Eastern Bank. It's why we put it on our signs all over the place. 
this project, it's good for the city. It's good for Darren, it's good for Steve, it's good for Greg. And most importantly, it's going to be really good for the people that live here, a good, safe place for them to live. It all starts with private investment from professionals like them. And I just want to thank you for everything you've done. It's been great working with you, and I wish you all the success with this. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. In closing, you know, we have a developer here who has decided to invest millions of dollars where there's a market for it. And the lot right next to us is the future site of their second project. If you haven't done so, take, take a look at the rendering before you leave today. I think you'll be pretty impressed. We, we had just sent an, an RFQ was recently put out by the BRA uh, to see qualified developers who are serious about investing in downtown Brockton. And we were able to turn up about 15 top-notch developers who will be pursuing opportunities right here in our downtown. If there's any uncertainty about Brockton's future investment potential, I can assure you that Brockton is open for business and we're going to continue to cultivate the relationships with developers just like the one we have with Darren here. Uh, thank you all for coming today and um, I guess that's it. We'll gather right here if you have a moment to uh, take a tour of the facility with Darren and his team and uh, we will have, uh, we'll cut the ribbon. Thank you.